Jarvis Island is an uninhabited 134 square mile coral island located in the South Pacific Ocean at 0 a degree 22 a euro squared s 160 a degree 01 a euro squared w, about halfway between Hawaii and the Cook Islands. It is an unincorporated, an organized territory of the United States, administered by the United States Fish and Wildlife Service of the United States Department of the Interior as part of the National Wildlife Refuge System. Unlike most coral atolls, the lagoon on Jarvis is wholly dry. Jarvis is one of the line islands and for statistical purposes is also grouped as one of the United States minor outlying islands. Geography and Ecology While a few offshore anchorage spots are marked on maps, Jarvis Island has no ports or harbors, and swift currents are a hazard. There is a boat landing area in the middle of the western shoreline near a crumbling day beacon and another near the southwest corner of the island. The center of Jarvis Island is a dried lagoon where deep guano deposits accumulated, which were mined for about 20 years during the 19th century. The island has a tropical desert climate, with high daytime temperatures, constant wind, and strong sun. Nights, however, are quite cool. The ground is mostly sandy and reaches 23 feet at its highest point. The low-lying coral island has long been noted as hard to sight from small ships and is surrounded by a narrow fringing reef. Located only 25 miles south of the equator, Jarvis has no known natural freshwater lens and scant rainfall. This creates a very bleak, flat landscape without any plants larger than shrubs. There is no evidence that the island has ever supported a self-sustaining human population. Its sparse bunch grass prostrate vines and low-growing shrubs are primarily a nesting, roosting, and foraging habitat for seabirds, shorebirds, and marine wildlife. History equals Discovery equals, The island's first known sighting by Europeans was on August 21, 1821 by the British ship Eliza Francis owned by Edward, Thomas and William Jarvis and commanded by Captain Brown. In March 1857 the uninhabited island was claimed for the United States under the Guano Islands Act and formally annexed on February 27, 1858. Equals 19th century guano mining equals, the American Guano Company, which was incorporated in 1857, established claims in respect of Baker Island and Jarvis Island which was recognized under the U.S. Guano Islands Act of 1856. Beginning in 1858. Several support structures were built on Jarvis Island, along with a two-story, eight-room superintendent's house featuring an observation cupola and wide verandas. Tram tracks were laid down for bringing mined guano to the western shore. One of the first loads was taken by Samuel Gardner Wilder. For the following 21 years, Jarvis was commercially mined for guano, sent to the United States as fertilizer, but the island was abruptly abandoned in 1879 leaving behind about a dozen buildings and 8,000 tons of mine guano. New Zealand entrepreneurs, including photographer Henry Winkerman, then made unsuccessful attempts to continue guano extraction on Jarvis, and the two-story house was sporadically inhabited during the early 1880s. Squire Flockton was left alone on the island as caretaker for several months and committed suicide there in 1883, apparently from gin-fueled despair. His wooden grave marker was a carved plank which could be seen in the island's tiny four grave cemetery for decades. John T. Arundel and Company resumed mining guano from 1886 to 1899. The United Kingdom annexed the island on June 3, 1889. Phosphate and copper entrepreneur John T. Arundel visited the island in 1909 on maiden voyage of the SS Ocean Queen and near the beach landing on the western shore members of the crew built a pyramidal day beacon made from slats of wood, which was painted white. The beacon was standing in 1935, and remained until at least 1942. Equals wreck of Bar Quentine Amaranth equals, on August 30, 1913, the Bar Quentine Amaranth was carrying a cargo of coal from Newcastle, New South Wales to San Francisco when it wrecked on Jarvis' southern shore. Ruins of ten wooden guano mining buildings, the two-story house among them, could still be seen by the Amaranth crew, who left Jarvis aboard two lifeboats. One reached Pago Pago, American Samoa and the other made Apia in western Samoa. 
The ship's scattered remains were noted and scavenged for many years, and rounded fragments of coal from the Amaranth's hold were still being found on the South Beach in the late 1930s. Equals Millersville equals, Jarvis Island was reclaimed by the United States government and colonized from March 26, 1935 onwards, under the Baker, Howland and Jarvis colonization scheme. President Franklin D. Roosevelt assigned administration of the island to the U.S. Department of the Interior on May 13, 1936. Starting out as a cluster of large, open tents pitched next to the still-standing White Wooden Day Beacon, the Millersville settlement on the island's western shore was named after a bureaucrat with the United States Department of Air Commerce. The settlement grew into a group of shacks built mostly with wreckage from the Amaranth, but later, stone and wood dwellings were built and equipped with refrigeration, radio equipment, and a weather station. A crewed aircraft landing area was cleared on the northeast side of the island, and a T-shaped marker which was intended to be seen from the air was made from gathered stones, but no airplane is known to have ever landed there. At the beginning of World War II, an Imperial Japanese Navy submarine surfaced off the west coast of the island. Believing that it was a U.S. Navy submarine which had come to fetch them, the four young colonists rushed down the steep western beach in front of Millersville towards the shore. The submarine answered their waves with fire from its deck gun, but no one was hurt in the attack. On February 7, 1942, the U.S. CGC Taney evacuated the colonists, then shelled and burned the dwellings. The roughly cleared landing area on the island's northeast end was later shelled by Japanese, leaving crater holes. Equals International Geophysical Year equals. Jarvis was visited by scientists during the International Geophysical Year from July 1957 until November 1958. In January 1958 all scattered building ruins from both the 19th century guano diggings and the 1935-1942 colonization attempt were swept away without a trace by a severe storm which lasted several days and was witnessed by the scientists. When the IGY research project ended the island was abandoned again. By the early 1960s a few sheds, a century of accumulated trash, the scientists' house from the late 1950s and a solid, short lighthouse-like day beacon built two decades before were the only signs of human habitation on Jarvis. National Wildlife Refuge, on June 27, 1974, Secretary of the Interior Rogers Morton created Jarvis Island National Wildlife Refuge which was expanded in 2009 to add submerged lands within 12 nautical miles of the island. The refuge now includes 1,273 acres of land and 428,580 acres of water. Along with six other islands, the island was administered by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service as part of the Pacific Remote Islands National Wildlife Refuge Complex. In January 2009, that entity was upgraded to the Pacific Remote Islands Marine National Monument by President George W. Bush. A feral cat population, descendants of cats brought by guano miners, wrought disruption to the island's wildlife and vegetation since the 1930s. These cats were removed through efforts which began in the mid-1960s and lasted until 1990 when they were completely eradicated. Nineteenth-century tram track remains can be seen in the dried lagoon bed at the island center and the late 1930s-era lighthouse-shaped day beacon still stands on the western shore at the site of Millersville. Public entry to Jarvis Island requires a special use permit and is generally restricted to scientists and educators. The island is visited periodically by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the United States Coast Guard. See also, Howland and Baker Islands, List of Guano Island Claims, Under a Jarvis Moon, an 88-minute 2010 documentary. References External links Jarvis Island homepage website with photos, weather, and more. Jarvis Island information website has several photos of the old Millersville settlement, together with more modern photos of the island. World Statesman offers brief data on Jarvis Island. U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service Jarvis Island National Wildlife Refuge The Jarvis Island Refuge Site